How's it going, guys? It is 3.46 a.m. Friday, June 10th, 2022, here in Japan, and we have a past level question for step one and two. Uh, this is going to be a very short clip. It's going to drive home an important factoid that students fuck up quite frequently. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L and man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 54-year-old woman, two-week history of increased thirst urination, 12-pound weight loss during this time. She has hypertension, hypercholesterolemia. BMI is 35. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So diagnosis here is acute type 2 diabetes mellitus. Overweight patient, increased thirst urination, metabolic syndrome. You can get weight loss in acute type 2. Okay, that might sound a little bit weird because the patient's overweight, but you can get weight loss, all right? So as I said, this is going to be a very short clip. You need to know DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, versus HHS, hyperketotic, hyperosmolar syndrome, okay? So DKA, type 1, HHS, type 2. So the key here, I'm just jumping right out of the gates, all right? The key you need to know is that you only get ketones in type 1 diabetes. You don't fucking get ketones in type 2, okay? So a lot of students will see a question like this, and they see the, the ketonuria and they choose it, it's the wrong fucking answer, okay? You're only gonna get this in type 1, in DKA. You don't get ketones in type 2. And the reason you don't get ketones in type 2 is because there is not an insulin deficiency in type 2 diabetes mellitus. We have insulin resistance. Now, patients, of course, can go on to ultimately get pancreatic burnout and insulin deficiency, but initially in type 2, we have high insulin levels. The answer here is hyperinsulinemia. We have insulin resistance. We have hypertrophy of the beta islet cells. And I've actually seen that as a separate answer for an NBME question. We have hypertrophy of the beta islet cells, hyperinsulinemia. Insulin inhibits ketone production. Okay, so insulin will stimulate fatty acid synthesis, and we can get malonyl CoA that shuts off the carnitine shuttle, which is required for bringing fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria for beta oxidation, which will, you're going to be cleaving off acetyl coas which you put two acetyl coas together, and you're ultimately going to get your ketogenesis, okay? So if we have insulin, we can't get ketogenesis. That's why we have fairly absent, absent or minimal ketones in HHS, okay? So ketonuria, wrong answer. It's hyperinsulinemia. So let me just whip through the other answer choices real quick. You need to know that in DKA for type 1, you're going to have decreased total body potassium. Total body potassium can be decreased in HHS as well or normal, according to the literature. Uh, serum pH is going to be under 7.30 in DKA, normal range 7.35 to 4.5, but the liter we're talking the literature here. Uh, just low pH in DKA, HHS, it can be normal. And serum glu glucose is often greater than 600 in HHS. It's often greater than 250 in DKA. Don't worry for US simile. I'm just whipping through why the other answers are wrong here. And bicarbonate, uh, usually under 18 in DKA, normal range 22 to 28, and it's greater than 18 in HHS. So look, once again, just recapitulating, you don't get fucking ketones in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Okay, you get ketones only in type one. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.